I had intended on having all of these listed for Halloween. And I'm, all, we're all, <laughs> I'm staying out of it. Pink, peach, bloom. Folks, I'm Scott and I'm back in the old curiosity shop. I hope you're having a nice day. I want to welcome new subscribers and I'm certainly certainly old time subscribers who are returning. I really appreciate you watching and uh, enjoying all of these old things as much as I do. I really have a lot of fun discovering antique and vintage items, but I probably have even more fun sharing it with you because we share that love of antiques and collectibles, and that's what makes this channel a lot of fun, I think. Well, we're gonna do a couple of things in this video today. I have a small haul, a few things here that I've listed today that are, are new in the old curiosity shop. We're also going to answer the question, what's up with that? Now, I'm gonna show it to you again. And I wasn't very nice when I initially asked you what's up with that because I didn't really let you have a good look. So that puts you at a disadvantage. So I'm going to let you have a second chance. But I'm going to give you the answer at the end of this video so you'll have to stay tuned. Here it is again. It's a big one. Definitely take a look at the inside. The inside is going to impact value, and I'll explain that at the end of this video as well. Let's also turn it upside down and have a really good look at that base. Okay, what do you see or what do you not see? Mm-hmm. That's going to be a good indication as to the maker of this piece. Did that help? I know that it did. All right, we'll talk about that in detail at the very end of this video. But first, what's for sale? In the old curiosity shop, I have six federal glass green sherbet cups. Here they are. There is an F on the bottom in a shield. Can you see it? Right there? That's federal. It's just a, a sort of paneled optic uh, design. Six of these. Depression glass, 1930s. No chips, no cracks, of course. No chips, no cracks. This thing, finally, and I hope it doesn't have my fingerprints all over it. It's a nice square, somewhat unusual uh, pink bowl or dish with four feet on the bottom, as you can see. It doesn't stand up very tall on the table. You see that? So just some type of a little uh, center bowl, or, or you could put rolls in it. Um, gosh, I don't know what else you would serve in this, but it is pink depression. Now there are a few light scratches in the bottom from use. You may be able to see that. It's not bad. It's unmarked, so I'm not quite sure which one of the companies made it. But it's somewhat unusual, and I like the fact that it's not etched. I kind of do like that. Oops. Okay, don't worry about the oops. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Uh, anchor Hawking Pink Peach bloom. Peach Luster, uh, 1950s. And of course, uh, and of course it is, uh, it actually uh, does not say Fire King, it just says heat resistant, so, but it is Anchor Hawking and it says Anchor Hawking on the bottom. Okay, it's this swirl. I don't often find these in the swirl, in that swirl pattern, but there it is, a vegetable serving bowl with uh, retaining all of its peach luster. That peach luster will come off of there, so don't be too aggressive with your SOS pads on this, okay? 
And then uh, the ubiquitous deviled egg plate. This is also anchor hawking. And uh, this is up there just in case anybody happens to need one. I think hawking might have also... I know they made these in peach luster. I want to say I've seen a, a jadeite one floating around, I think. Uh, what, what else? I guess it doesn't matter, but I had intended on having all of these listed for Halloween. Easter. But uh, then I had to go and get dramatic and pretend I was Lillian Gish and threw myself down on the railroad tracks and tear my arm up, which is doing much better. I'm really starting to be able to use this thumb. Ooh, it still hurts and I'm trying not to overdo it. But I didn't get this glass listed for your Easter deviled eggs, but what's next? Memorial Day. We have all summer to eat deviled eggs and hopefully we'll be getting together, right? In person. And then two mixing bowls by the Hazel Atlas Company. I believe this is called pet ribbed. No, hold on. <laughs> Paneled Optic, a small mixing bowl. I don't remember, seven inches across, something like that. The rolled edge and the very typical uh, Hazel Atlas base. Uranium, glass. Another one that's not seen as much, this is also, no, this is not Vitrock, it's also Hazel Atlas. Remember the base, notice the base. So it's a white milk glass mixing bowl with the red stripe on it. And this is also gonna to date to the depression era. This is, what, this is a style that you just don't see as much. I don't as much, see as much as the glass. Okay, there's that. And this is wonderful. I love it. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vase and also a flower frog. Now, I know it looks like a candle holder as well. I suppose you could shove a candle in there if you wanted to. I think it was really meant as a butt, as a, for, you know, for one long stem here. Solid on the bottom. And then there are four holes. No, ignore that one, that, that one doesn't do anything. But these four holes right here um, go down inside of the piece and you could stick little tiny flowers, little, little blooms in all four of them. And so the little bird sits there with flowers all around him and he chirps at you. Uh, remarkably, there are no chips or cracks and there's no crazing on this. Now it's not made in Japan. It's a little better quality than that. And I, I'm gonna say Germany. I was looking very carefully and could not find the word Germany on the back, but what I could find uh, I can see a bunch of numbers under here. I don't know if you can see it. There is a surface chip on the back. But the Germans were great for putting numbers on everything, on all of their pottery. So I'm pretty sure it's a German piece, but it could be Czechoslovakian or Poland. But anyway, that's a sweet little piece. And I haven't seen this one before. And nothing is chipped on it. Nothing on his little tail or beak or anywhere. It's absolutely perfect. I wish I had some flowers to model that I could put with it. I've got some other things down here on the floor I'm going to list as well. But you'll just have to be surprised when you log into the old curiosity shop. Now before I tell you about the uh, what's up with that mystery piece, I want to show you some lamps that I bought. Uh, over the weekend, I delivered some items to a subscriber, a lovely couple. This is the second time I've met them. Uh, they're oh, about an hour and a half away. And so I was able to deliver the winnings to them and then do some antiquing in that area. So I want to thank them for their business. I didn't, I'm saying them. I didn't ask if I could say their names. So, but you know who you are. It's great to see you again. And while I was uh, in that area sourcing and thrifting, I bought two lamps to keep. So uh, I did buy a few things to sell, but to keep for myself, I bought 
two of these, a matching pair from the 1920s. Now these would be, uh, this kind of thing would be on a mantle piece or even typically on a buffet in a dining room in the 1920s, a long buffet or a long server. You know, they had these great big long servers and there would often be two, two lamps like this. And uh, as I said, I have a ma there are two of these. The other one is over there. Now the nice thing is all of the amber teardrop and pendant crystals are present. So there's three here and there's three on the other one. I only have eight of the teardrops in crystal uh, left on this one. And I'm missing all of them from the back. The other lamp is completely missing all of these teardrops. So these are not inexpensive. These are not, unless you get lucky, uh, these can be difficult to find. You will find them at auction online, but they're, they are a little, they can be expensive. Um, I would, if I, if I found amber, I would redo the whole thing in amber. I wouldn't necessarily have to keep the crystal at the bottom and the amber at the top, but we can see it did originally come this way. Uh, so it's got to be complete. They both have to be rewired. Um, the wire will be exposed, so I'm going to be using reproduction cord. And I'm going to have to be on the hunt, the lookout for these little teardrops. So if you've got a box of them sitting around your house, I will purchase them from you. You, you name your price. Um, but I need quite a few. I think I need, let's see, two times eight is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I think I need 24 of them. So uh, anyway, I wanted to show those to you. At some point, these are all gonna be restored and uh, it's, it's made out of metal and this is polychrome work on here on the flowers and everything. Very typical of the 1920s. Okay, uh, let's see, I'm also going to introduce, let me get a hold of this, move this up here. All right, now let's go back to this piece here. Bear with me, good folk. Oh my goodness, it's so heavy. Okay, I said, well, this is easy, and it is easy. You guys all knew it was a piece of carnival glass and most of you were able to say grape and cable and either Northwood or Fenton. Yes, both companies made a grape and cable pattern, both the Northwood and the Fenton, Fenton companies. Why, did, why was it so important to look at the bottom? Because we see the absence of the Northwood N, which is embossed on a lot of their glass, not all of it, but a lot of the Northwood is signed. So there's your first clue that this is not Northwood because there's no Northwood, there's no N on the bottom. The, uh, the other reason that we know that this is Fenton, what, um, you can study the configuration of the grapes. Uh, who's got time for that? Or you can just look at the three feet on the bottom and on the Fenton pieces, these little uh, curly Q feet have, are ribbed here, they're decorated, they're fancy, but on the Northwood, they're smooth. Okay, so I've got a piece of Fenton, probably dates to around 1920. Now this is actually called an orange bowl, not because it looks orange in color. In fact, Fenton referred to this color as um, golden. We collectors just usually say uh, marigold would be the usually accepted, the iridescent marigold. And it's one of the most, well, it is the most common color you're going to find in, uh, in carnival glass. So this is the large three-footed, what's called an orange bowl, or which really means a fruit bowl, and not a punch bowl. Uh, they did make a punch bowl that obviously didn't have the feet on it and had a pedestal that it would sit on. And grape and cable Fenton. Now let's, uh, let's have a little, be careful, be cautious. Uh, let's take a look at something. Let's go Google, I'm sorry, not Google. Let's go on eBay and let's look up 
Fenton Grape and Cable Bowl. Okay, let's do it. Aha, look at what we get. Okay, here's an auction listing. And wow, look at the bids on that. Over way over $500 and it looks just like mine. That means mine has to be worth $580. So I'm going to start the bidding out on mine at like 450. Should I do that? No, no. No, no, no. Because what we didn't do is click on that auction link and dive a little bit deeper. And when we do that, we see that the example in that auction, although it looks like this from the outside, when we look at the inside, it is decorated with the Persian medallion pattern embossed on the inside. A lot harder to find than mine, which has the plain interior. Ah, so... Uh, it really pays to do to do as much research as you can. So when I list mine, we have no Persian medallion interior on this. This is going to be worth quite a bit less than uh, the one that's currently receiving five hundred uh, over five hundred dollars worth of bids. And it seems to me it's going to tell you something else. I think that grape and I think that. This large bowl might be the only piece made by Fenton actually decorated on the outside, the exterior, with the grape and cable. A lot of their other carnival glass pieces, the grape and cable pattern is actually on the inside. Okay, so I think I said everything that I wanted to say about that. And the last thing is... Uh, one of my favorite books, and the one that I uh, is my go-to book for the Fenton, is this one. And this is called, well, it's called Fenton Art Glass, 1907 to 1939 Identification Guide. And this is Margaret and Ken Whitmire. Uh, so, and this is a collector's book, and if you pick this up, this, as I said, go, is, the early, is the early Fenton Glass. And um, it's very helpful. Uh, you know, I, I'm having a hard time because of my hand, so I, sorry if it seems awkward uh, the way I'm showing it to you. It's a, it's a nice book, and it's going to cover just about all of the early Fenton that you might find. And since, you know, I'd like the other book, but since I mostly deal in the old, old Fenton, this, this book is... Uh, invaluable to me. I love, I love this because of what I can learn from it. Okay, now let me have a little sip here. You guys have a sip too. I don't know if you can hear that. It's not thundered. There's construction outside. And I can hear it even up on the eighth floor. Okay, let's play what's up with that. And this was another detached retina moment for me. I found this in a thrift shop in North Philadelphia two weeks ago. And I almost peed my pants. Now when I show it to you, you're going to say, big deal. You know, whoopee fizz, whoopee fizz. Well, show it to them. All right, there it is. Now let's look at it. I'm not going to tell you what it is until, you know, two or three videos in the, in the future. But take a look. You see the dolphins? Or sea creatures of some sort. Okay. All right. Now, what are we thinking? We're thinking depression glass because, yeah, we're thinking depression glass. We're, th we're thinking, hmm, I don't see any mold lines on it. And it looks pretty good quality, so I'm thinking one of the elegant glass companies, yeah? Process of elimination. So we can probably rule out Anchor Hocking and Hazel Atlas and Federal and so forth. Uh, what else do you notice about it? And I want you to pay close attention to the color. 
You guys are going to have fun arguing over what color this is. I'm staying out of it. <laughs> I'm staying out of it. Uh, <laughs> but what color is it? Now, you get a wisteria, pinkish, purplish, amethyst-ish. But then, if we move it around some more, now I'm seeing hints of blue. What is going on? It almost seems, it almost appears to be changing color. Look at it there. It almost appears to be two-tone. Well, <laughs> you're going to have to just wait until a future video. A couple of days, I'll come back and I'll tell you who made it and what it is. Uh, this was kind of an exciting find. It's not something that you're going to find every day. Well, okay, folks, I suppose that's it. I ramble on and on and on. I don't know what else I'm supposed to tell you. I do have some other things. Um, oh, I know. I did forget to mention in my last video that if you do choose to subscribe to the channel, The Old Curiosity Shop, it doesn't cost you anything. You don't get, um, uh, you know, there's no bill or any type of thing. It just uh, means that you can click the notification little bell and anytime I release a video, you'll know about it. But also, sometimes I put things in the old curiosity shop that I don't get around to putting in videos or I might put it in as a buy it now and you might miss it. You can actually subscribe to my eBay store, which there's no cost. You don't get any phone calls. You don't get anything in the mail. But you just go to my store on eBay, the link is in the description box below. And if you subscribe to the store, anytime I list something, you will get, if you turn on the notifications, you'll get an email that says, the old curiosity shop has just listed this glass bowl and you'll know about it even before uh, I do the video hauls. Okay, so, if you want to do that, I just thought I would mention it. I don't usually talk a whole lot about YouTube subscriptions and eBay subscriptions because it's just, I mean, you know, my passion is this stuff all around me. Okay, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow or I'll see you the day after that. I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.